Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next designer commentary. Uh, this is the one that I've been waiting for. This is light. Uh, I guess I shouldn't really say I, I haven't been waiting for it because I only recently made this game, but it is one that I'm very, very excited about. It's a it's a fever game, I guess is how I would describe it, in that I had this idea that just suddenly came burning into my brain and it had to get on the page. And in like a day or two, it went from like a just kind of a, a wild thought in my head down to the page into this laid out form. Uh, and I put it out there. Similar uh, sort of processes when I designed Corvid Court and I put together the first layout version of Corvid Court, which was like a two day flurry of writing. Same thing here with light. Now, light took a lot less time to write because it is very short. As you can see, it's just two pages. Um, the length and the format and everything like that is actually borrowed from 2400 uh, by Jason, which is a really, it's a fantastic game if you haven't seen it already. It's, it's lo-fi sci-fi, I think is the, the phrase that he uses. Um, it's it's a super cool rules light science fiction you know, setting game, um, which follow this really beautiful format, which is nice, awesome cover art, simple, kind of like simple and clean then is everything else, just the name uh, and fit it all essentially into three half sheets of paper. So this this whole thing, if you printed it out, would be a standard letter size piece of paper, double sided. So really you're working with three panels and then you've got a cover and the cover art is by Beeple. Uh, Mike Winkleman, who uh, has generously allowed the general community to use their art for whatever we, we want. It's something that people in the, the Brain Trust Discord had, had talked about a couple of months ago. I remember, I think Kurt Potts was one of the first people that I saw use Beeple's art Um and, and had kind of confirmed that this was okay for us to do. And then Jason, who made 2400, uh, kind of learned a similar thing. Uh, and so all the 2400s um, games, and those 24XX games, have this format. Uh, and I thought, this is such a cool format, I'm going to use it. Now, Light is not a 2400 game. It just is the same format, and it is modular. And I'll talk about that modular thing in, in a second here. The light is my love letter to destiny. Uh, if that wasn't kind of clear in all the constant tweeting and shouting I've been doing about it, I love destiny. I'm obsessed with it. Um, and so I wanted to make an, a destiny RPG that's destiny with the serial numbers filed off. So it is just blatantly, obviously a destiny game. Um, and I, and I wanted to do rules like I, you know, I didn't want super simulated combat i didn't want um you know like turn-based and and all the the loot to have like ranges and everything like that like specific measured out ranges and i i, I just that level of complexity has never been interesting to me i've, I've talked about it in the past if i if i want to play a game like that i'll play 40k uh i won't i won't play a role-playing game uh so this game then inherently is going to be a little bit lighter on the rules um and so just like right away, you can see that I'm I'm clearly just calling I've, I've I went to like the thesaurus and just changed the names to a lot of things. Uh, so, you know, the Titan becomes the Colossus, the Hunter becomes the Stalker, the Warlock becomes the Witch. Um, and so how how light works is it's a it's a D6 system. So you're only rolling D, uh, six sided dice. Uh, to keep things kind of quick and easy. And it's a dice pool. Uh, you roll a pool based off of the element uh, that best describes the action that you're doing. So elements are not only like elements, the way that we think about them in terms of destiny, where you've got like solar, arc, and void, uh, but I'm calling them pyre, volt, and nether, uh, because again, it can't be the exact same thing. But um, these things take the place of attributes. So when I was originally thinking about how I was going to design this, I had attributes in mind. So it was going to be like body, mind, and I don't know. I think I was the other one. So it was, you know, are you doing it like with strength? Are you doing it with thought? Or are you doing it with like precision? And then I realized the elements 
of the game fit those concepts very well. So when you're describing what your character is doing in this game, you're actually describing it via an element that best fits the thing. So if you're doing something powerful, but also like emotional or sweeping huge movements or huge impactful things that's acting with pyre. And that's not just like literally throwing like fire out of your hands, but it is just a, a powerful emotional speech that you give is made with pyre as opposed to Volt then acting as the sort of um, impulsive, reactive, sort of quick, effective um, thing. And then Nether then places or sits in that space of like, you know, being methodical, you're thinking about it, it's slow, it's practiced. And so all of the way that we can describe our actions, not just actions that are, are combat actions, but the actions that we use navigating the world, talking with people, fit these elements. And so that's how the game is played. You Each of them has a score, that you um, you build at the beginning, and then that score is just how many d6 you roll. And when you roll, one through three, failure, four, five, you know, it's that classic success with a complication, and then six is, is a success. And that's, I mean, that's the basic tenets of the game. That's that's really all you need to, to know. Um, then as a as an immortal guardian, as a as a as a beacon, as I call them, you've got light. Uh, and light is this sort of spendable but replenishable resource that you can spend to re-roll. Um, if you got a bunch of harm coming in, you can just say, nope, not happening and spend a point of light. Or you can use it to activate the powers that you have, you know, the cool things that guardians, aka beacons, can do. Real simple stuff. If you die, you die, except in light where you're immortal guardians. If you die, you then fill in permanently one of these light boxes, which shows that you have resurrected. You give back the full health, but you don't always come back full health, full strength. Um, this is a, a slight deviation to destiny where, you know, usually you just get right back up and there's no consequences to dying. Um, but in this, you you start to um, get corrupted every time you die. I think that's something that I've always been a little bit more interested in is seeing the corruption of, of guardians. And so you see it in beacons in, in light. Um, so every time you fill in one of these boxes permanently, um, you're rolling an extra die in your rolls, the dark die, which can still give you success. But if that dark die is the highest die, the guardian takes harm as that sort of like darkness and corruption is used to fuel them. But they're also more effective. So if the highest die is a three it gets bumped up to a four to five. So it becomes more effective because the darkness is powerful, but it, uh, it hurts to do it because it's not inherently what you want to do, at least with the current classes. Um, and the game is, is played, you know, very light, loose narrative theater, of the mind sort of, uh, combat. So there's no turns. Enemies don't have turns. And you can see that in one of the other things that we're going to talk about, uh, in this video, but here are my, my classes uh, and, you know, these numbers that I came up with for like health and light, that's just stuff that I made up that just felt right. The, the weapons themselves, uh, they didn't have these tags when I first released light that didn't come until I created the weapon catalog that had the tags to them. Um, but every character has a sort of a special perk, which is sort of the class ability uh, of destiny translated into this. So, you know, Titans create barriers. So Colossus is going to just sort of be damage reductive. Um, the stalker, they don't take harm as a consequence on a four to five. That's the hunter dodge in action. Uh, and then the witches thing allows them to heal or uh, increase the effectiveness of nearby allies. That's the that's the rift, right? The warlock rift in in action. Everybody then has a weapon, a melee attack, and then three powers and one power from each of the elements. Because when I first made this, the, those, this was all I intended to make was this, and then I was going to be done. Uh, so I just wanted one thing from each of the elements so that you had something that felt like like everything in Destiny. Like you were the main character in Destiny who actually like wields all of the light, unlike a lot, you know, in some of the lore in Destinies, like some guardians are, they just wield one element. Um, that's not always the case, of course, but like there's something kind of cool about the main characters like switching back and forth all the time. So I wanted us to be like that. And then uh, the rest of the, the the core rules for for light are very are very light. Um, I just say that the the core loop is playing is doing strikes. 
uh, and strikes are just their adventures, right? Their quests that you're you go out to do. And I just list a bunch of examples of strikes here uh, that you could do. And then I talk about this idea of fuel, which is naturally the players are going to want to get better because this is a destiny clone, which means you want a grind, right? That's a huge part of destiny is you're grinding loot or you're grinding like light levels or you're trying to get new um, abilities and powers. So naturally that needs to be a part of the game. And so at the end of strikes, you get these boons, which are going to be increasing your light, your health, the the elements or the attributes, um, then also getting loot. Um, and, you know, like in a rare case, get some of that light back if you lost it to the dark. And then this is where I this is where I initially ended it. And this is the idea that I really like about light. It's a modular game. So this is another one of those things that I borrow from 24. 100 2400 2400 i don't know how jason actually refers to it um but it's a modular game the intention when i first put this out was that this is just the start and that i would just continue to release updates and 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 supplements for this game that you can use if you want none of them are necessary this this right here is technically everything you need for the game but more supplements would come that would then add to the experience would give you more options uh, and what I've done is I've released three. Yes, I've released three modules so far. Uh, I had to I had to count my count for a second. I've released three modules on top of this, um, and they're going to keep coming out. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to combine these core rules and the modules and, and put it out into like a print book. Um, this is all highlighting what I eventually want to do with the game, but I thought it would just be kind of cool to just to quickly breeze through some of the other modules that I've done, uh, just to give you a sense of what what I want to do with this game, where this is coming from. So Lighthouse was um, the first one that I came out with, uh, which is, well, this one in Vulcan came out at the same time. This is the first one I was working on. This was, I wanted to give more structure to the, the cycle of play, um, which is... Right now, just go do strikes, which is which is cool. Um, but I know people like a little bit more structure than just, I don't know. Just go play the game. Uh, and so what I did is I created factions. You know, the similar sort of factions that you would see in Destiny. And I brought in bounties because uh, that's that's part of the Destiny grind. Is you're grinding out your daily bounties, your weekly bounties, uh, and you're doing it all the time. So now what I've done is I've introduced this idea of taking on bounties that are specific to the factions. You know, you've got your Vanguard analog, you've got the hidden uh, analog, and then you've got the Drifter analog here. They've got their own bounties, things that are specifically interesting for them to do. And as you do these things, and as you do strikes for these, these factions, you fill in this little four-segment clock. And if this ever fills up, you get one of these boons from that faction, which is themed towards the faction. And they're oftentimes either like, an ongoing bonus that you have in all future strikes. So for example, like this one, if you, if you help out the Vanguard, you get robotic frames, like little soldiers that robot soldiers who will accompany you on strikes. And so that's just a thing you have. There are no rules for these soldiers, but you have them. Um, or for example, you know, a lead on a place of power for beacons. This could be something that GMs could use as a, a means of setting up a strike that allows the beacons to get access to new powers or a new subclass. If ultimately there is a supplement that gives you stuff for, for new subclasses or things like that. Um, so these boons are either like one and done sorts of things or these ongoing permanent effects that you get. And the, the goal here is that you complete these bounties, you cross them out until you've done all of them and then they refresh. And so it gives the players something to do, in addition to whatever the strike's main goal is. Because just like in Destiny, you know, you're out playing Crucible. You're not just playing Crucible. You're trying to get the bounties for Crucible done at the same time. So you're using weapons you wouldn't normally use uh, uh, or, or trying out new strategies that you wouldn't normally uh, try. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish here with, with this, is to expand on that strike experience. I then list out a bunch of other... Um, factions that GMs can use to, uh, you know, build their own set of bounties and boons based off of these these factions here. Uh, so here's a future war cult, also called the Visionaries of War. You know, I I, I I'm not hiding it, and, and Nevin Holmes, uh, a friend of mine, has has made it abundantly clear that I'm not hiding that this is a clearly a Destiny game. 
Uh, and I'm not trying to hide it. I, you know, I, I love Destiny. I want this to be a Destiny-inspired game, and that's why I'm making these modules. Um, and then I've got uh, the initial rules for engrams, the idea that uh, when you're out there, GMs probably want to give you loot, but they probably don't want to figure out what the weapons are on the fly, so they just throw engrams at you, and you can go decode them uh, and, and figure out what they are. Now, you can figure them out what they are, because I also released another module along with Lighthouse. That's the weapon catalog. That's what Vulcan is. So Vulcan is your Banshee 44 equivalent. It's the gunsmith for the city. And these are rules for, for Vulcan, the gunsmith. So uh, they have their own bounties that you can use, uh, that you can fill in, and they get you favor. But rather than having a clock, I just wanted it to just be favor turns into things. And this is where I... I have now sort of codified how weapons work in light. So now you've got kind of base frames for weaponry, uh, which have like a harm and then a couple of tags, like a range tag and then another tag if necessary. Uh, and then all the tags that I can think of for now that go into the game that that can sort of customize the weapons. So anytime anybody ever finds a gun or an engram and they translate it, they decode it, you can just roll quickly on this table, roll to see if it has any additional tags, figure out what the weapon is, and then boom, you've got a new uh, a new weapon that you can use. And then you can go work with Vulcan to replace weapon tags or add you know add tags to your weapon. Or if you save up enough favor, a custom-made weapon. So you get to pick the type, you get to pick the, um, you know, two tags of your own choosing. So you can choose to make like a really cool bow uh, that, you know, that has like ricochet arrows and, and stuff like that. Uh, and so I really like this idea of Vulcan as this is sort of me dipping my toes into creating a weapon catalog, a loot pool. That's not, it's not like fully fleshed out. Right. But it's, it's now we have more, we have more to work with than just the, the GM having to make things up. And then the other thing I did is I created legends. You know, these are going to be your exotic weapons that have, you know, they have your array of tags, but then they have a special thing about them. Um, so Fang is my thing that I took from, uh, Thorn, Jarvis is Darcy, etc. You you could probably figure out which of the or you know what these are. This is Telesto. Couldn't think of a fun name for Telesto, so I called it Grenadier. Um, and then crafting, right? The whole point of this in in Destiny is to come up with fun weapons and to use those weapons. Uh, and so this is just giving you some some ideas about how to craft, how to create some more of these legendary weapons, and. You know, between this and in Lighthouse, I mentioned this idea that there's there's going to be more gear. Eventually, I'm going to release a module that's going to deal with the concept of, like, armor. Now, I don't think I'm going to go full out and, like, come up with a loot pool for every type of armor. Because, again, I don't, I'm not trying to get that granular with this game. But maybe each beacon can carry one piece of special armor that gives them a perk of some kind. Um, so you're not grinding out a full set of armor you're you're grinding out a a piece that that you particularly want uh, i haven't come up with that module yet but that's that's something to come last module and the last thing that essentially builds the the core set of of light is is nemesis aaron burkett uh is the one that gave me the name for that so shout out to aaron uh nemesis is the is the enemies so you needed something to kill. And I realized that in none of the stuff that I released, there was any actual rules on how to fight things other than enemies react. And so I, I hadn't given any rules for that. And so this is the first four factions um, that are clearly the destiny factions that I've that I've made some some units for essentially. So first things first is there's rules for playing with these enemies. And I wanted to keep it light again. It's all reactionary. So they have they got health, they have a weapon and then they have moves. This is taken from any like powered by the apocalypse game where enemies have moves that they do uh, in sort of reaction to things. Uh, but these could also be seen as like motivations as well. The GM can use these if they ever wonder like what an enemy is doing at a time or how it react. They can look at these moves as sort of inspiration or a starting point. Uh, so I've got four factions uh, and they, they are, they're the destiny faction. So Corvus is the cabal. Um, they're the Corvus because I made a game called Corvid Court and I insist on putting the Corvid Court in every game that I play or that I make. Um, so the, the cabal became sort of a bird 
themed war group rather than the the giant muscular rhinoceroses that they are in Destiny. Um, but this is where you this is where my Corvid Court uh, entrance comes in. The Windswept is a wonderful name that Nevin Holmes came up with, which is the name for the Fallen um, or the Elixni, because uh, Fallen's a racist name for the Elixni. Um, and the because the the Elixni, God, what's the name of the event? It's, it's like the cyclone or something like that. Um, the 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 devastating event that was the the fall of the Elixni people um, inspires this name of windswept. So I think uh, Nevin made a great name, and so they all have um, all the units have just been re rehashed. So like this is the the captain. Uh, and they're just called a cyclone, right? And then, you know, this is a drag who's a wisp, uh, poorly armed, you know, because they've been docked. Ah, oh, very clever, very clever. Uh, and then the other two are the Surge and the Ruin. Surge are the Vex, and then the Ruin are the, um, the Hive. So we've got Cabal, Elixni, Hive and Vex, which means, you know, things like the Taken and the Scourge, still opportunity for them to make their way into the game. Um, but, and you can look through these. I give you four units for each of these to use, which is now set up for, you know, writing in more units, creating more units for these, writing out the other factions. But what I've done here with Lights, uh, I've, I've made a game that I'm extremely happy with. I'm extremely excited about. And what I have are the core rules, right? You've got a core rules and you've got three modules that I think are sort of the essential reading for the game. You have factions and work to do. You've got a weapon loot pool system and you've got enemies to kill. We have everything we need for a destiny game. Um, and so this is sort of the core pack. It's going to be modular, which means in the future, uh, I'm recording this at the end of 2020. In 2021, I'm going to be doing a very modular approach. I'm testing out an idea of doing something called season passes. Depending on when you watch this, the season passes or the season has already begun or it will be coming up uh, in the start of 2021. Uh, I'm very excited about this idea of trying to figure out a, an interesting way to support modular games without just kind of like bloating the main game page with a million different modules. I think that works in some regards, but I want to try something new. So uh, I hope you're excited about light. I'm like, I'm super excited because I'm obsessed with destiny. And so making things that are destiny themed is just very fun and fulfilling. And hopefully this helped you learn a little bit more about what I'm doing here with light and what I want to do with it uh, and where this is all coming from. So if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter at Gila RPGs. Uh, and I will talk to you all later. Have a good one.